2021 Ford Bronco Sport Badlands Review But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. In September 2020, my wife and I took delivery of a Jeep Renegade Limited. This was not the original plan. We wanted the car pictured here, a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport Badlands. In a fit of optimism after the July debut, we got as far as submitting a pre-order and deposit before realizing six weeks later that a $450 monthly car payment made little sense with COVID keeping us indoors and working from home for the rest of time. We were right, as seven months later the slate blue renegade we got for a song has a mere 3,000 miles on it. But after a week behind the wheel of the baby Bronco, our buyer's remorse is stronger than ever. For her, the Bronco was cuter. For me, it's everything else. The Sport Badlands, more even than the Outer Banks I reviewed in November, is packed with character and a joy to drive. It's capable, powerful, and for now, unique. In other words, it's a cure for the common crossover. The Bronco Sport has become an increasingly common sight on the roads of Metro Detroit, and it's easy to understand why the Motor City has taken to it so quickly. It's a boxy thing, with strong lines on the flat hood and slightly flared wheel arches working with a simple, two-box profile. The neat safari-style roof breaks up the profile and adds a dose of vintage Land Rover Discovery flair, while also amplifying cargo volume. While I'm reviewing the Badlands, this sport is technically a first edition, which is little more than a loaded Badlands with some trim tweaks, graphics, and gloss black wheels. I'm ambivalent on the black stickers, although they add a bit more variety to the Area 51 paint and black roof, and the first edition wheels are not the good ones. In the cabin, though, the first edition wears navy pier leather upholstery, which is otherwise only available on the three-cylinder outer banks. It's the main reason I won't begrudge any of the 2000 buyers for the limited edition option. I like the three upholstery choices on the Sport Badlands, but the blue leather and gray fabric feel more modern and refined. The bucking Bronco logo embossed on the seatbacks adds to that impression, although that touch is hardly exclusive to the first edition. There's a clear argument to make regarding the Bronco Sport's interior material quality. Plastic is abundant and it's harder than expected on a car that starts at nearly $30,000, particularly on the doors, around the climate vents, and on the center stack. But in a week of testing, I never heard a creak or a groan, or stumbled across a sharp piece of trim. This is hard plastic, and I wish Ford would do better, but at the very least it feels durable and well screwed together, rather than cheap and flimsy. The Bronco Sport features a cushy and supportive pair of front chairs with ample headroom and, on the driver's side, 8-way power adjustments. Heating is standard on both the Badlands and First Edition and proved a worthwhile feature on a few frosty mornings. The First Edition adds a standard heated steering wheel, it's part of an option pack on the Badlands, while the seating position is excellent regardless of model, with solid fore, aft, and lateral sightlines.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.